In this lesson, we want to talk about the vertex form of a parabola. So we've already spent a lot of time working with quadratic functions, but we want to specifically learn how to graph a quadratic function. And in order to do that efficiently, we need to know about this vertex form. Okay, so we're going to talk about that today. In case you're clueless about what a vertex is, we'll talk more about it in the next lesson when we're graphing. But basically, the vertex of a parabola is the lowest point if it's an upward facing parabola. Right, you get that standard U shape. And then it's the highest point if it's a downward facing parabola. So if it's a U turned upside down. Again, we'll talk more about this in the next lesson. For now, we need to know how to convert between this form and this form. So something like f of x equals a times x squared plus bx plus c, where a is the coefficient for x squared, b is the coefficient for x to the first power, and c is your constant term. Now, most textbooks, most people will say this is standard form. This is going to vary based on which textbook you're using. Some textbooks will say this is standard form. So I don't want to confuse you, but I'm going to refer to this as standard form and this is vertex form. Okay, so this guy right here, this f of x equals, you have your a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. The reason most people say this is vertex form is that you can immediately, upon inspection, find out where the vertex is. So the vertex will occur at h comma k. So this is my x coordinate, okay, and this is my y coordinate, right? So this would occur at h comma k. This would be my vertex for the parabola. So what we need to understand for today's lesson is how to go from this format here, this f of x equals x squared plus 12x plus 34 into vertex form, right? This is what I call standard form. We want to go into that vertex form that f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h, and this is squared, and then plus k. So I want you to notice something. This is a binomial that's squared. So we know earlier in the course, we talked about the fact that if you have a binomial squared and you go through the FOIA process, you get a perfect square trinomial or a three term polynomial that factors into this guy right here, a binomial squared. Remember, we can create this guy from the completing the square process. I know a lot of you guys are probably rusty on this, so let me just walk you through it. The first thing you need to make sure of is that the coefficient on the x squared here is a one. So in this case, that's already done for us. Okay, so you don't need to do anything there. We'll see an example in a minute where it's not, but for right now, it's super easy. So the next thing you want to do is group your x squared term and your x to the first power term together. So I'm going to say I have f of x is equal to x squared plus, I have this 12x. So I'm just going to put parentheses around this for right now to say this is just in a group, and then plus my 34, okay? So what I want to do now is complete the square and let me just scroll down and get some room going. So I'm going to say I have f of x is equal to, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So x squared plus, I have my 12x, and then I'm going to add something here to complete the square. And then I'm going to subtract something here, and I'll explain this in a minute. And then I'll put plus 34 like this. Okay, so do you remember how to get this missing term right here? Remember, you take the variable that's raised to the first power. And you take the coefficient of that variable. So in this case, it's 12, right? That's the coefficient. You cut it in half, meaning you multiply by half, and you square it. So 12, if I cut that in half, or if I multiply by half, that's 6. 12 times 1 half is 6. If I squared that, I would get what? I would get 36. Okay, so this is what I need to create my perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to add 36 right here. But I can't just do that. Normally, I would add 36 to both sides to make that legal. But in this case, I want this f of x over here on the left. I don't want to mess with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 36 as well. So 36 minus 36 is 0. I haven't changed anything mathematically. I can always add 0 to something. It's not going to change anything. So what I want to do now is close the parentheses down on this, okay? But normally, you have something out here that's multiplying this, and this creates an issue. Here, I just have parentheses here, so I can, at this point, just close the parentheses off like this and remove this from here, and I haven't done anything mathematically illegal. You have to be careful, though. If you have something out here that's multiplying this, then you've got to distribute, and we'll see an example of that in a moment. So for right now, what I've got is a perfect square trinomial here. So f of x equals... I can factor this into what? Well, it would be x plus, again, this guy was 6. Okay, so x plus 6, that quantity squared. And then over here, I just do negative 36 plus 34. That's going to give me negative 2. So I've found my vertex form. It's a little bit off, okay, but you can still write it this way. Remember, we said the vertex form was f of x equals a 
times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So the reason I say it's a little bit off here is because of the signs. Here you have a plus and here you have a minus. Here you have a minus and here you have a plus. So if you wanted to find the vertex, you'd have to write it in this format or just know how to convert it off the top of your head, which most people do. But essentially you would just take this and say, okay, I'm gonna match the format. So A is one, so you don't need to write anything there. You can just say X minus a negative six is the same thing as plus six. So now I've matched that minus sign there, okay? So minus a negative six, and then this is squared, and then I'm gonna do plus a negative two, okay? So from here now I can just grab this guy right here and this guy right here, and I know my vertex occurs at negative six comma negative two. Okay, so that would be my vertex for this parabola. All right, let's look at another one. So this one will be a little bit more challenging because the coefficient on x squared is not one. So we have f of x equals 2x squared plus 32x plus 123. So again, the first thing you have to do is make sure that this guy is a one. Now, again, when you work with this, when you're solving quadratic equations by completing the square, you just divided everything by two. But you don't want to do that again because you have this f of x over here. You don't want to mess with that. So what you're going to do now is you're going to factor it. Okay, so I'm going to say that I have f of x is equal to, I'm going to factor a 2 out from this, again, first group. I'm going to treat these as a group, and I'm going to say I have 2 times the quantity. I'd have x squared there, and then plus, if I pulled out a 2 from there, I'd have 16x. Okay, so I've taken care of that. Okay, and let me just kind of scooch this down. I know I've got to add something and subtract something. And let me put my parentheses there, and let me put plus 123 there. Okay, so what are these two missing values here? Again, I just take this guy right here, this coefficient, look at the variable raised to the first power, you want that, that coefficient, cut it in half and square it. Okay, if you just say that a few times, you'll remember it forever. Cut it in half and square it. My ninth grade algebra teacher taught that to me and I never forgot it. So if I cut 16 in half, I get eight. If I square eight, I get 64. So if I say 64 here and 64 here, okay, I have completed the square, but this is where it gets a little tricky and a lot of people make mistakes. Normally, if this guy isn't here, if this isn't a two here, I can just regroup this, okay? But because there's a two here, you gotta realize that to remove the parentheses, we have to use the distributive property and multiply two by every term there, okay? But I don't wanna do that. I just wanna get rid of this part right here. So what I'm gonna do is say that I have f of x is equal to, I'm gonna keep my two out in front, so times the quantity x squared, plus 16x, plus 64. And then for this part right here, I'm just gonna distribute the two to this so that I can remove it out of there, okay? And I'm gonna say I have plus, and I'll do two times this negative 64. And then I'll wrap this up by saying it's plus 123, okay? So that's what you gotta be careful of, okay? If you have something outside the parentheses like this two or whatever the number is, if it's not one, you've gotta do this extra step. It's a very common mistake to miss that. All right, so now what we wanna do is write this. We'll say f of x equals two times the quantity. Okay, this guy would factor into what? It's x plus, we know that 64 came from us taking eight and squaring it. So this would be eight and this would be squared. And then we would have two times negative 64, which is negative 128 and then plus 123. We know that a negative 128 plus 123 would be negative five. So this would be your vertex form. You have f of x equals two times the quantity x plus eight squared and then minus five. Again, if you wanna match things up perfectly, you would write this as minus a negative eight, okay? And you would write this as plus a negative five. So I can just write that like that and say f of x is equal to two times the quantity x minus a negative eight, again squared, and then plus a negative five. So the vertex here is gonna occur at negative eight and then comma negative five. So negative eight comma negative five. Again, this is your vertex. Okay, let's just do one more and then I'll go into the super simple vertex formula, which is what you're gonna use, but you might need to know how to do the completing the square method. It's always good to look at it because it comes up every so often. All right, so we have f of x equals 11x squared plus 66x plus 90. I'll kind of go through this very quickly. We know we wanna factor that 11 out. So what I'm gonna do is say this is f of x is equal to, I'm gonna treat this again, first two as a group. So 11 times the quantity x squared plus 6x and then plus 90. Again, I'm just factoring the 11 out from the first two terms. All right, so let's go ahead and say this guy right here, I wanna cut that in half, okay? Again, you're looking at the variable raised to the first power, look at the coefficient, 
cut it in half and square it. Cut it in half and square it. So six divided by two or six times a half is three, and then three squared is nine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add nine, okay? I'm going to add nine inside of the parentheses. Now, if you wanted to get really advanced, I recommend just putting minus nine inside of here so you remember to distribute. But if you can remember this on your own, you can just say that, okay, I have 11 times negative nine, okay? So it would be minus 99 out here. Okay, so I just kind of skipped the step there. Once you do this a few times, you're gonna skip that step. You just have to make sure that you multiply 11 by the negative nine so that it's the correct number. So then we have our plus 90 here and we're ready to go. So what I can do, is I can very quickly factor this and say this is f of x is equal to 11 times the quantity. This guy factors into what? x plus the 9 came from 3 squared, so 3, this quantity squared. And then negative 99 plus 90 would be minus 9. Okay, so that's your vertex form. Again, if you wanted to match it up perfectly, you would want this to be a minus and this to be a plus. So you'd say f of x is equal to 11 times the quantity x minus a negative 3. This is squared, and then plus a negative 9. So your vertex occurs where? Negative 3, comma, negative 9. So the vertex, okay, the vertex is going to be at negative 3, comma, negative 9. All right, so now let's talk about the vertex formula. And this is something that you're basically going to use. You're not going to complete the square every time. You're just going to do that if you're asked to do it. So we have this f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, again, you got to know that a is the coefficient for x squared, b is the coefficient for x, and c is the constant. We already know this from the quadratic formula, so it should be something that's familiar to you. And if you go through the process of completing the square to put this in vertex form, you would find that the vertex occurs at negative b over 2a, so this is your x-coordinate, and then your y-coordinate would be f of negative b over 2a. So in other words, find out what x is, and then once you have that, plug it in for x in your function, and you're going to get y as the result. So let's look at an example. All right, so here we have f of x equals 5x squared minus 20x plus 15. So if I wanted to find the vertex, what I would do is I would say that the x coordinate is negative b over 2a. So what is b and what is a? We know that a is the coefficient for x squared and b is the coefficient for x. Make sure you include any sign. So if it's minus, you want to put plus negative so you don't make a sign mistake. So the negative of negative 20 is 20, okay? And then two times a, a is five, so this is 10. So this is 20 over 10, which is two. So the x coordinate is two. And then what we want to do is plug this in for x to find out our y coordinate. So in other words, we want to just know what is f of two. So we would have five times two squared is four. And then plus, you'd have negative 20 times 2, which is negative 40, and then plus 15. So I'll do 20 plus 15, which is 35, and then 35 plus negative 40 is negative 5. So this would be negative 5. So your vertex occurs at 2 comma negative 5. Okay, if you wanted to write this in vertex form, again, just match things up. It's f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So h, again, is going to be your x-coordinate. So this is the x-coordinate. And k is your y-coordinate. And I'm going to run off the screen, so let me kind of scooch that down. Okay, so what we want to do here is say that we have what? We have f of x equals, what's my a? What's this, right? It's the 5. So 5 times the quantity x minus, what's my h? It's the x-coordinate. So from the vertex, my x-coordinate is 2, and this quantity is squared. And then plus, we have my y-coordinate, which is k, okay? So this is negative 5 in this particular case. So I can put plus negative 5 if I want, or I can just put minus 5. It doesn't really matter. So the vertex form here is f of x equals 5 times the quantity x minus 2 squared, and then minus 5. All right, let's just do one more of these. It's good to get a lot of practice because when you start graphing these things, you need to know how to do this off the top of your head. All right, so we have f of x equals negative 4x squared minus 64x minus 261. Again, the vertex will occur at negative b. b in this case is negative 64. So the negative of negative 64 is positive 64 over 2 times a. a is negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So 64 over negative 8 is negative 8. So the x-coordinate is negative 8, 
And then again, to get the y coordinate, I want to do f of negative 8. So what is that? Well, negative 8 squared is 64. 64 times negative 4 is negative 256. And then you would have negative 64 times negative 8, which is positive 512. And then lastly, you'd have minus 261. So if you do negative 256 plus negative 261, you get negative 517. And then negative 517 plus 512 would, of course, be negative 5. So let's just go ahead and say this is negative 5. So we'll put negative 5 there. And I'll just go ahead and erase this. And again, if you wanted to write this in vertex form, you'd say f of x is equal to your a, which in this case is negative 4, times the quantity x minus whatever your x-coordinate is from the vertex. In this case, it's negative 8. So you could put minus a negative 8, or you could put plus 8. It really doesn't matter. So this quantity is squared. And then you're going to have your plus k. k, again, is the y-coordinate from the vertex. So this is negative 5. So you can put plus negative 5 or minus 5. It doesn't really matter. So your vertex form is going to be f of x equals negative 4 times the quantity x plus 8 squared, and then minus 5.